Hello everyone, so this is going to be my week three video update. Just kind of wanted to show everyone how the tank's doing, um, uh, new addition, um, and yeah, we'll just get started. So, big thing guys, down here in the sump, I was able to finally hook up my reactor. Um, like I was saying in previous videos, I didn't really think it was necessary at this time to add it in, but I figured why not, and it looked like a pretty uh, tedious process to get in there, so I had some time off this week and I uh, just wanted to get it going. Um, again, I tried putting it in the sump originally, but that just, it wasn't working. There wasn't enough space. It's a, it's a pretty big bulky item. And either it was going to kind of block some of the filter sock area over there, it was going to hit the skimmer, because it is a little bit of a bigger skimmer for this uh, tank setup, um, or it was rubbing against the heater on the back here. So there really wasn't a, a good way around it. Um, I know some of you are probably going to think, well, that's dangerous, because if those fittings break or, you know, it just starts leaking, you're in trouble, and I completely agree. Um, it's a temporary fix for right now. Honestly though, uh, short of getting a different skimmer, which I don't plan on doing, I don't know where I'm going to put it. The footprint in here is, that's what I'm working with. I could probably push the filter socks back a little bit. But yeah, so I got the uh, return pump down here. It came with the unit. It's just uh, Cobalt Aquatics MJ1200 comes with the uh, half inch adapter and then this uh, harder half inch hosing. Uh, what I might do eventually is just, just switch over silicone hosing, like pretty much everything else in the tank, like your return tubes, typical um, tubing for an aquarium. I don't know why they decided to ship it with this stuff. I have a feeling it has something to do with the Murloc col uh, connectors. I'm assuming the uh, harder, almost PVC style tubing um, less chance of it of water getting past it like basically it's gonna stay locked in there a lot better but yeah it's kind of a unique setup long piece of tube kind of going over my reservoir to the in on the reactor and then I basically just have it going straight down into one of my filter socks down here um, I originally just had it completely hanging over and dripping down back into the sump but it was too loud so I saw someone else do it this way, just right into the filter sock. And it's working, it's not pushing the filter sock out by any means, even though it's a harder material. Um, my only other concern was that, you know, potentially it could pop out, but I think it would still at least, you know, overflow into the sump. Biggest issue I'm worried about is if these connectors fail. I'm gonna have water spewing on my electrical, which is a no, it's not good at all. And it's just gonna be spewing out, hitting the door onto the floor. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I got my carbon in there. Um, I will be eventually, once I put some actual livestock in here, um, I'll buy some GFO as well and add it in there. Um, skimmer's doing pretty well, guys. I cleaned it up the other day. You can kind of see that's where the bubble level is. It's been kind of weird, though, the last couple days. So on and off, like right now you can kind of see it's like a wet foam, pretty much just wet bubbles. But there's points in the day, and like all day yesterday, it was like a dry foam. So the wet bubble portion was actually down in the neck. And then it was, um, had a nice fluffy dry foam coming up into the neck of the cup. But it's like, it's switching on and off. I, I haven't, the only thing I did was add the, the reactor stuff in there. And obviously I had to adjust a little bit the diaphragm back there to adjust the water levels. But besides that, I haven't done anything else. Um, these are, and I need to take them out, put either new ones in or clean them. These are the new uh, felt filter socks that I added in. Um, so if you remember from my previous video, I tried ordering a couple generic ones from Bulk Reef Supply that were branded as uh, four inch. But unfortunately, they don't, they're not compatible with Red Sea's um, four inch setup. So actually, yeah, right over here, just uh, the 225 micron felt filter bags. They come in a nice little box, nothing fancy. Uh, I bought four of them, so basically two, uh, two uses worth. And then obviously I still have the original ones that came with the tank with it, where the, uh, the mesh material 
Um, these are definitely trapping a lot more, as you can see. I mean, this one right up here is pretty gunky. And actually, last night, I switched them out. Just, you know, this one right here was over here, and I just switched the two because it seems like the one in the front gets the majority of the gunk. That's another reason why I decided to, well, not to mention limitations of how far back I could push the reservoir. That's why I put the uh, carbon return in this back one because I feel like it's the least amount of water flow through it. But everything else seems to be running good down here, guys. I did kind of clean up the back a little bit. I got some more to do. Just bought some of the uh, Velcro command strips and uh, affixed that to my back wall. I originally was just going to put some nails back there. There's little... Um, like slide brackets in the back that you could hang it but um with as wide as it is as you can kind of see like the right side is pretty much flush with the back right of the tank but the left side goes behind the tank and unfortunately one of the screw holes or nail holes would have been i wouldn't have been able to nail it in so i just got about six command strips on, or five i'm sorry uh, three vertical and two horizontal and it's working real well it's not falling off i originally had it, you can't really see, but uh, I originally had it on the wall over here with just two command strips and it fell off. There's just too much weight with all the cords being on there. Um, I really like it. I'm actually going to probably order another one of these gray ones because it has the uh, selectors on it, which I really like. I'm just using a normal GE one that I had around the house right now because I was running out of plug space for the reactor and then um, I use the always on port my main one to plug in the other surge protector so I had, to, I had the, uh, the spectral controller plugged in there originally so I also had to that, add that to the new one. Um, another thing that I did start guys too was uh, I got my bulk resupply dosing stuff just two part solution I probably need to put a towel on the floor because it seems like it's a small little drip there from the calcium and alkalinity. I got the magnesium mixed up last night. It's the one that you use the least. Uh, bulk resupply recommends that you use about 20 ounces of magnesium after you've gone through a full gallon each of the alkalinity and calcium, which you should be dosing pretty much equal parts. So you would, if you fill it up properly, you'll empty them out at the same time. But as you can kind of see on the bottom, there's still some salt particles. So just gotta keep waiting and shake it up. Maybe dip it in a hot bath or something. Um, also, I've purchased the Red Sea uh, Marine Care Kit, as well as the uh, Refoundation Pro Kit to test my calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels. And then the Marine Care Kit is your ammonia, nitrate, pH, alkalinity, and nitrite. The alkalinity test, though, in the Marine Care Kit, not as accurate, I feel, not as good as the Pro Kit. Um, but pretty happy with the uh, the testing, and they give you quite a bit of stuff. Actually, you see, this morning I tested my ammonia, and based on the level readings, it's either at about a 0.2. It actually, if you look at it, it looks a little bit more green in the video than in reality. It's actually a pretty vivid yellow. Um, so I'm actually probably between zero and 0 0.2, which is awesome. I'm gonna explain how I got to that so quickly. Um, and then I'm also gonna test my nitrate here in a little bit. But uh, I meant to save this for this video, guys, but unfortunately my fiance recycled it. But uh, we decided that we wanted to add some fish in a little bit sooner than originally planned. If you were watching my videos, we said about um, May, and we're in about second week of February right now. We weren't really going to plan on putting any livestock in here until about mid to end of May. Well, she really wants some fish in here. And I don't really blame her, and I, I don't think that, you know, feeding a couple fish is really going to be that strenuous if we have to leave and get a house sitter. So. Uh, basically, to kind of help speed cycle my tank, I, ha I purchased the uh, Instant Ocean Biospira. Um, I think I bought about the 8.45 fluid ounce one, which was good for up to 75 gallon um, total water tank volume. 
Um, mine is around 65, so I just poured the whole thing in. Uh, I didn't really save any. Um, and so I guess this can be a little bit of a mini review on that too. I will tell you guys that previous to running that, my ammonia levels were at about the 1.2, between 1.2 and 2. They were pretty high. After 24 hours, they pretty much hit the 0 to 0 0.2 range. And I am now three days after putting that in there, and those levels have stayed consistent. Which, that's a big one for fish. Um, your ammonia pretty much has to be 0 or else you are going to slowly burn them or damage them and that's not good I mean guys we're talking about fish but for most people these are real living pets even though they swim it's not like a dog or a cat but you still need to care for them and maintain them just like you would any other pet in the household so you don't want to just rush in and throw fish in here so um, originally I was gonna put in a couple yesterday my local fish store had a couple paired clowns and that's what we're gonna start with but the only reason I'm not and like I said, I'm going to test later, but my nitrate levels have not really dropped to where I feel is a comfortable level. You can read up on this, guys. Everyone has a different variation of what they say is acceptable. Some people like keeping just a tad bit of nitrate in there because um, a system that is absolutely like too clean can also have some negative effects. Uh, some people say anywhere between 0 and 40 is acceptable, 0 and 10, 0 and 5. Like I've read so many different articles. I'm basically trying to get it at least between the 0 to 2. And right now, I believe I'm in between the 2 to 5 range when I tested uh, yesterday afternoon. So I would just like to drop the nitrate levels a little bit more um, before going uh, and getting a couple fish in here. But just something to look forward to, probably in my next video or two, you guys will probably see a couple clowns in here, as well as I'll probably add some inverts at that time. Don't know if I'm going to go the uh, hermit crab route, but I will definitely have some uh, turbo snails in here. I'm going to get a peppermint shrimp, um, and then a couple clowns, so that'll be the newest addition. But yeah guys, nothing too much new to report other than that. I've started dosing, I've started uh, maintaining those levels. Uh, right now I'm going to cut back on it. Uh, they recommend about 0.1 milliliters per gallon. And the only problem is I really have nothing in my tank that is requiring calcium or alkalinity right now because I started with this dry rock. So besides the initial formation, of which I would love to have adequate levels, which I've heard can take up to six months before you actually start seeing it grow on this dry rock. Um, there's nothing really using those. Now snails, they'll obviously use the calcium. If I add corals in here, they'll start using that stuff. But what I was thinking about doing is my local pet store also sells live rock. It's actually um, the Reef 2.0 stuff. Um, sorry, I forgot the actual manufacturer website, but I know it's called like Reef 2.0. I might just get a smaller one, like a pound or two rock, and just kind of maybe quickly do a re-aquascape uh, or just put it in the corner over here at the bottom, uh, like right in this area, and then maybe that'll help kind of seed the tank a little quicker and speed up the process. But um, yeah, I've cut back on the dosing. I'm doing, uh, my tank would be about 18 milliliters of each a day. I'm doing about eight or nine right now because the last time I tested yesterday, my calcium alkalinity levels were a little high and that's what I'm contributing to is that I'm dosing as if I had a uh, complete setup system with fish, coral, and you know coralline algae which I currently don't so cutting back on that but yeah I got the reactor installed that's going to be its more permanent placement for now unless I can think of something else skimmer's working fine everything else is working fine lights are beautiful nice shimmer yeah, but that's it for this video, guys. Appreciate everyone watching. Um, like I say in all the other videos, please don't hesitate to leave any questions, comments, or suggestions down below. Thanks for watching.